Carnic. Now, no long ramblings. Right? I promise. No long ramblings. I'll cut you off. Okay. This will all make it into the court, so. Okay. Get a move on. Hello. And welcome to. You called? Well, I think it's a nice little treat for everyone. I think okay. so. Yeah, okay. Welcome to today's video, and the topic of today's video is. My scarf. The topic of today's video is. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'll. I, oh, what we did the video about, Jay? I, I'm, well, I'm, I, have, I can never think no. of. A, I can never think of a good topic name for them. Okay, so the point being. And I, cut. The, no, 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 <laughs> not right. So, um, let me see. So, Charles, thank you, Charles, for your comment. And before I go into Charles's comment, just to say thank you to Fiona for um, the suggestion with regards to the uh, mattress on the, 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 the mattress topper thing that's to go underneath the um, mattress upstairs to help us sleep more comfortably. It's interesting that it was traveling togs that it was based on there. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm already getting distracted. Thank you, Fiona. We're going to get that. If anyone's curious as to what I'm rambling on about, if you go into the comments on the T6 after four years, you'll see there's a comment in there from Fiona referencing how to sleep more comfortably in your camper. Okay, so Charles actually made a comment basically saying that he's concerned about the growing ban on diesels both in Europe and UK cities and Bristol recently announced a total ban on all private di diesels, right? So he raised the point this, to ask me what my opinion is. And again, if you go into the comments, you'll see my answers in there. It's quite a long, detailed answer. So th this video really is about, I'm not an expert on this, right? I'm not an expert and I've only kind of loosely thought about it, but it, it is a little voice at the back of my mind, always concerned is to say, because the whole idea was that when I got the van, it was the van for life. And there's a little voice in my mind saying to me, what if Fiverr in 10 years from now they ban diesels or they ban, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. So it does worry me because then you think, what am I going to do? Or if they tax us out of existence because they're not green. Uh, so really the, the purpose of this video is to maybe, myself and Vanessa will discuss it, what our thoughts are on it. And But really the purpose of this video is to get people's comments coming back and then that way then other people can read the comments and then have a think about things because I'd say there's far more, people are far more expert in their knowledge of this. I've only basically kind of scratched the surface thinking about it, but there are, there are more implications to this. And, um, you know, and I know when people watch these videos, they expect, they expect people to maybe have the whole thing worked out and the law and the legality and percentages and this is going to happen. It's not going to be that it's kind of video. Based. Yeah, so if you're looking for that kind of video, the thing to do now is Switch off. drop out now. I'll be able to see it in the analytics if you have dropped out by now. It'd be interesting to see. Okay, so I'll give my thoughts. Yes, it is. So, so in Ireland, in Ireland, they changed the rules years ago to make the taxing of, of your car uh, more beneficial if you drove a diesel because it was considered greener. And also if the CC of your engine and the efficiency of your engine was better. So you were being rewarded on some level with lower taxes. But that seems to have all been flipped on its head now. Now, they haven't started taxing as heavily for, ta for diesels in Ireland. But it seems to be going that way that companies are now, but they're not producing diesel anymore. And also, um, I suppose VW are under pressure to produce more efficient vehicles. So the latest T6 Air One is Euro 6 compliant. And I think the new van is even more efficient and has even better efficiency. So, so the ultimate thing is, do we think long term, um, if you buy, to, you know, to help Charles with his, his concern was, if you buy a van now, are you suddenly going to find in five years from now, you can't enter cities and things, things like that. Um, are there going to be restrictions around it? And what I basically said to Charles was, he's correct. And on some level, I do agree with banning, um, you know, diesel going into village or towns and things like that in cities. Because when we go into Dublin, you know, you can, when, they, when they open a new road and trucks suddenly bypass a town, you can really, there's a sense, mm -hmm. isn't there, that there's less noise, less danger, less congestion, and the air is cleaner and all that kind of stuff. So in a way, I do agree with it. And I think if they brought in, say, you know, electric only cars, then you go fine. But then people like us who have a diesel powered van and we're going to have it forever unless we get the T7. You know, what are we, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So my view is that 
I think they're going to have to, if they do start bringing in these kind of bans, there's going to be an implication from the cities in that, from a tourist perspective. Mm. They will lose tourism because most of these vehicles that drive around, like these vans, because of the, because of the efficiency of them, are diesel. Now, if a company starts, you know, if they stop making diesels and move to petrol, well then, it's, but it's the same difference. It's still, you know, it's still a carbon-based fuel system. You know mm. what I mean? So I think that's the one downside. All of a sudden, all, you know, a town who has a camping, you know, say, say like somewhere like Munich or somewhere like that, and they have big campsites in and around Munich, and all of a sudden then you can't, you know, you can't access them. Well, that's not good for the campsite. And it's also not good for tourism. No, they have to. They have to take everything into account before they make. Yeah, but you see, the question is: I wonder, Charles. I wonder: is it the heart of the city? You know, is it? You know, can it, there's going to be a zone around? So say, say, a, you know, two or three square kilometers that you can't mm. get in, or you know, so for Dublin, you could drive around it, obviously, and you could get into a certain you, point. You can't drive down certain streets anymore, though. Only public transport's allowed down. Yeah, so in Dublin what they've done is they've changed. So what they did is they put in a new light rail track and what they did was they reconfigured the city and now only taxis and buses, but they're diesel. Yeah, So. but there's less of them. It's not everyone with a car. Yeah, so they've done that. So it's that kind of idea. And then obviously, so, so the way I t see the thing then is, obviously there's that kind of consideration that um, there's the consideration around, you know, excluding people, which I don't think they can do. So they're gonna have to make some kind of allowances or compensate is in some way that what they'll do is they'll have park and ride systems to get in. So for example, when we went to Vienna that time, mm. right? We drove into, what was it, not Vienna, was it? Salzburg. Salzburg, Salzburg, yeah, when we went to Salzburg, um, we drove into the heart of Salzburg. Mm. But so the idea would be maybe you get to the outskirts and there's a, a tram to bring you in or something like that. And that's fine, you know, you could do that. I wouldn't mind, that wouldn't bother me at all. It's all part of the experience when you go to these cities, isn't it? It is, but all of a sudden then it blows the cities. Yeah, but they're not going to they're not going to do it, we'll say, if there's a shopping centre in the middle of the city. People the shopping centre will oppose it because people need to be able to get in and out of the shopping centre. And the chances are people that are getting in and out of the shopping centre are driving diesel cars. True. So how are they gonna know? True. So you see, the thing is, how did... Br how are you going to police it? Well, you see, what do you mean? How did... Well, sure, the cops would see it. That it's a de They see two not exhaust not pipes and pull you over. them on the roads to... No, that's in the UK. The in the UK and America, there are far mm. more cops than there are in Ireland, yeah. right? So, yeah, but it's a valid point. And I think the thing is, Charles is concerned and was depreciation, you know. And that is a concern of people in Ireland here. Part of the... Part of the a big problem in Ireland with, is the amount of imports. Because you see, people in, in England, Scotland, Wales and everything are opting into petrol and there's a lot of diesel engine cars mm -hmm. making their way into Ireland and it's what it's doing is it's it's eating into the market over here is my understanding. Yeah it is. Anyway to stay on track so so the way I, I think the thing is if they do go ahead and do it I think then as long as they have some way of getting into the city then it's fine um, or else the government might turn around and say look you know you can hypothetically you could convert your van to electric at some stage when the technology is available and we'll help you do it and you go mm. okay yeah we'll do that as long as the range is there like you can do your house now and there's a, a a grant a grant <laughs> yeah don't have those big long pauses i have to cut them out so so the, so it, it, so there there are i'd imagine that they have to be reasonable about it but then the thing then is about depreciation and is your value and is the value is the value of your van going to drop and i'd say you know yes i think but you don't buy these vans considering a resale value you buy these vans because you're buying the van because you one you want the van and two <coughs> you plan on keeping the van <coughs> not you plan on selling the van in a year's time well yeah but you see to be fair to charles like we were looking at getting the t7 Say T six point one. We weren't one. looking at getting. Right. Well, you were. Right. Okay. But say, but say, say I was and I did, then all of a sudden I'm facing into that depreciation. Yeah. But then <clears throat> you're you're missing the point of what the van is about. Then. Right. Well, we're getting sidetracked into yeah. a separate argument. So look. So I think that the, 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 my view of it is is that yeah okay the government's going to have to do that and I think then <coughs> at some stage they might do incentives because then it might be look we need all these diesel vehicles off the road and they do some kind of an incentive and then they help you transfer into electric as long as the range is there so you'd imagine you know governments are going to have yeah. to do that because if you consider v, like BMW not BMW VW and and so on they're making these vehicles and all of a sudden then if there was no market for them 
you know so it we're in, we're in a funny period of kind of mm -hmm. like where we're transitioning from one technology into another you know it's a bit like you know at, at one stage when you know horse drawn carriages and you see old photographs and people had cars it's the same kind of thing in that we're transitioning so people had horses and they're like well what do i do what do i do with my horse i mean if you go around dublin there's old stables in dublin for you know when there was horse, horses and things like that as well i see all these petrol stations and garages they're all moving into food and all that kind of stuff because they see the writing on the wall the arabs have sold off the oil industry it's the biggest ipo in in history they've sold the oil business they've gone public i think um, for billions and billions and billions because they see the writing on the wall as well is that this ele this electric ve vehicle revolution is on the way mm -hmm. like it's a you can see it it's a bit like say veganism and vegetarian boo everyone hates that stuff but you can start to see a movement people are becoming more people that as the generations progress people are becoming more concerned about the environment and all that you know it's so a culture thing yeah and an age a generational thing as well i think yeah, so look, so I think the thing, my view is, obviously, we're going to keep the van, we need it for the range. If some cities say no, then we'll have to have some kind of work around it. Uh, but I can't see all cities, and I could see Ireland probably not going that way. But in the same way, if cities do bring in traffic restrictions, whether they're diesel or not, you kind of go, look, that's kind of a good thing. You have thing. to work around it either way, so. Yeah, but I think the thing is then, it's depreciation is the concern, you know. So And I, and I, think, that is an ine I think that's inevitable, because I think, look... 99.9% .9 of all cars on the road are diesel and petrol and at some stage they will become uh, what's the word obsolete because if battery power does take off you know it's inevitable but the the, the point I was making to Charles was that you know you see you look at classic cars you look at all the classic VW buses that are 50 60 70 years old mm -hmm. like what are they going to do are they going to disappear no there'll always be some demand in my mind for fuel in that regard I think you know people will always want you know there's always going to be petrol heads there's always going to be people who want to have some kind of you know f you know f diesel or petrol mm. kind of engine and that you know the people love those vans and they're not going to suddenly ditch them because the, the other thing the other thing I just make this point the other thing is after fuel actually making the vehicle is incredibly hard on the on the environment so you know, if they're going to scrap all these cars, sure, that in itself has a carbon footprint mm. that must be gargantuan. So in some way, to say to me, keep your van, because that's less impactful. And that's probably a good thing about VW van owners. They probably do have one van, and it lasts them forever, instead of replacing it every five years. Mm. So they keep their van. There's less carbon footprint. And then on some level, if they can convert them, then that's even better. Or as they start to die out, then the whole idea will be there'll be fewer and fewer diesel cars on the road. And the downside for us will be the demand for diesel and petrol will be such that it will drop and then the price of petrol and diesel, relatively speaking, will go up because there will be, be a smaller market. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say you're talking 10, 15, 20 years maybe. You know? And in 20 years from now, like I could be dead. Like I could be. You know, be dead tomorrow. I could be. I'm sure I could be, yeah. But like, you know, say, say I'm not. Say I'm not dead. Anyway, that's my point, Vanessa. Yeah. Keep looking at myself. I think we just need to kind of... Speak up. Well, I mean, I'm speaking loud enough. Yeah, but I can't, I'll have to change the volume then if you speak really quiet. Oh, very sorry. No, look, I just think maybe we're overthinking it a little bit. No, don't do. say that. I do feel that. We aren't overthinking it. I think we are. It's a very valid thing. It is, it is. It absolutely is. But I think... How one, are we overthinking it? One city... Well, I mean, they're still selling diesel cars. No, no. So there's obviously Charles massive... used the example of one city, and clearly it's mm. near. It's like if Dublin said it, we'd be like, "Oh, wait, what?" Mm. But he said one. But I'm sure there are more. Which is not. This is part of the point I was making. We're not informed okay. as to how many cities. Mm. Go on. Sorry. Oh, well, then I don't know. I just think maybe we just need to um, maybe yeah get informed, educate ourselves on it, and 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 then make an actual decision as to what you're going to do but i mean is the, the the next vw going to be electric probably not is it well you see they can't make an electric vehicle for traveling if the range is three and four hundred kilometers it's exactly just not so enough. what's going to happen especially when there's too few par charging points you know now the thing is if you have like if you have a tesla and you pull into one of the tesla supercharger places you're, you you can fill the battery um 80 percent in something like 20 minutes or half an hour you know, so you could mm -hmm. go into a garage, sit down, have a cup of tea, blah, blah, blah. Now, it's a different thing, but we'd have to get used to it until the batteries improve. And then it'll be, you know, they'll obviously get it, better it, and better. They wouldn't be able to carry the weight 
with the van alone. With the batteries? Yeah. Before you go putting in anything to the van itself, is probably near two tonnes. Yeah, it? but you see, you take out the engine. Ah, oh, right. See, there'll be no engine. The motors sit on the wheels. So there's a bit of a trade off. You're taking out an engine and a fuel tank. Okay. So a full fuel tank, 60 litres. Now, it's, I know diesel and petrol isn't as heavy as water, but you're looking at 60 kilos. Mm. You know, for a full tank, 60 to 80 kilos. So there's a bit of a trade off. This yeah. is the thing. But I think the batteries are hugely heavy. I don't think it's going to be something we're going to see in the next couple of years. Everyone suddenly banning them from. You, they couldn't possibly do it in Ireland anyway, because for the, not not straight away, because for the longest time they've been telling us to go and buy diesel because it's more efficient and yeah, better for. But that's changing. Yeah, I know that. I get I get that, uh, but they still also need to remember that they're still selling them. There's no yeah. incentive to buy an electric car. They're so expensive, people can't afford it. Yes, but. I'll use an example, Nokia. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Nokia, like the, we can we can think of, and I use it like when I'm talking to people in business all the time, people get into this kind of, oh, it won't happen for years and stuff like that. And you go, look at Nokia, boom. Nokia, when, you know, phones, Nokia, it was associated, if you said I have a Nokia, people didn't think, they said phone, you know, I have a phone mm. and it was all phones and phones. And Nokia, boom, went overnight. Apple, uh, the iPhone, the iPhone came out of nowhere. Mm. You know, it came out of absolutely nowhere, I know, and it's changed and the I whole industry. And I appreciate that, but a thousand euro versus thirty thousand euro, what's it's 30, very what's different. 30, well, that's that's the, the the price of a basic one of those family cars. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's there's a huge difference there. No, that doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Why doesn't it make sense? Well, you, because you, I'm you saying can, I could say in someone, some scientist in a yeah. lab somewhere tomorrow could crack battery technology and could, boom, the yeah, whole industry I mean, changes. The, the, the original iPhone cost you what a thousand quid. I don't so you can just go out and buy it. You can put it on your credit card. You couldn't do that with a car. No, no, I'm not saying. What I mean is the technology can change yeah. overnight in a heartbeat. Yeah, I get that. I get that. But it's also the value on the technology. See, you you don't really buy your own cars, so you don't kind of. See it like Bought that. the van. Bought the van. Fair enough. I don't understand your point. Okay. Somebody out there does. Okay. Well, I don't. <laughs> well, look. So, so look. The, th the, th the, the thing I'm saying is that I think it is it is a concern of mine as well, Charles, and everybody. I think it is a worry. Uh, you know, I think you could see a very quick chat transfer from you know one type of vehicle to another, and then the thing is, are we going to get stuck with it? But I think my view, as I said to Charles, is you only live once. Take your chances. I mean, you could wait five years and be waiting and waiting and waiting for this, you know, electronic this or this revolution in battery power, and then you'd have wasted five years of not having the van. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the thing because it's not just you, Charles. It's we're all in the same position of, you know, will it suddenly our cars depreciate as everyone wants battery power? But I mean, that's see in Ireland what happened was when they switched to to diesel, you know. Like it was all the petrol cars, but then they brought in grants and things like that as well. And sure, people replace the cars after five years anyway. And I suppose it's a bit like the value of your house dropping. It only affects you if you plan on selling it. You know. So if you're not planning on selling your van, like I, I, um, I can't get my head around this whole thing about buying the van and thinking can it's going to depreciate. Straight, you're a bit too short there. Oh, that's because you're just a bit too tall. Because you guys gonna look but weird no, now, the way. You? No, you see, you're interrupting me every time Sorry. I open my mouth. You interrupt me. I apologize. Mm. So. I just can't get my head around buying the van. It's 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 something that you're supposed to have forever. It's not something you're supposed to replace in a couple of years' time because it's the whole idea of buying such an expensive thing. Well, so don't even go there. So <laughs> why would you buy it thinking it's going to be worth less? I mean, if that's the case, don't buy it because as soon as you drive it off the forecourt, it's worth less. Yeah, but then you see you're back to the other point he's making. That all of a sudden then you're being blocked. So we so we have booked a ferry to Scotland, right, for later in the year. And imagine if we got to Scotland and they were saying, okay, you can't go to Glasgow, you can't go to Edinburgh, you can't drive through this national park. Chan you're like, oh, what are, are we going to do with the van? Chances are we wouldn't be driving into cities anyway, because we never do. We generally drive well, we to we, the we, outskirts well, we drive, and make our way in. We drive through Dublin. Yeah, we tend to, we tend to go around cities and towns. Yeah. That's very true. Um, but... 
but that's us. That's us, not can't, Charles. They, 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 they can't tell you you can't drive into something. How are you if there's no bypasses for it? No, they have big signs. They have big signs. Well, because technology, they have big signs saying no diesel. So you run the gauntlet by driving. And then there's camera recognition. And all I have to do is entry in my reg. No, and it, okay. It knows, if, so it'll if go, it's a thing, this is your diesel. And right. And I appreciate that. If it's a thing that you're going from one end of our village to the other end, but there's no other alternative. How are you going to get through it? Well, and what you're going to is on the other side, and there's no other alternative. There has to always be an alternative before they that's, can that's, command but, these things. Yeah, but that's the point I made. That's the point yeah. I make that they're going to have to make some kind of allowances by. Yes. So in Ireland, they're going to have to improve the the light rail, which is called the Lewis. Then there's the yeah, buses and everything. Yeah, and you know what? Everything. That 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 can only be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say, like, I, in the morning when I'm leaving to go to work, I see thousands and thousands of people stuck in traffic jams, jams trying to get into the city. You know, I'm lucky I go out of the mm. city. I'm sure those people in the morning would love to have some kind of alternative way that if they could I get to work. I would love an yeah. alternative route yeah. so that our little village is not so jam-packed yeah. every single yeah. solitary day. So, so I think the thing is, Charles, I'd say, look, um, you know, Ireland is a population of about 4 million. About 1 point something million people are jammed into Dublin and a lot of them travel in during the day. Like every city, it's congested and all that kind of stuff. So I think banning them is a good idea, but I think they can't, it's like they can't ban things until they give people an alternative. And remember, as a taxpayer and a voter, you know, like so Bristol could do this, but we've seen it, there's a city, There's a. a it's not a city, What's Dunleary? Is it a big town? It's a big town, right, on the outskirts of Dublin. And they brought in these parking restrictions. And what it did was it really hurt the town. It hurt the town. Loads of shops closed because people couldn't come and park. And so these kind of things do happen. I think long term, if the van, if, if elect battery power... See, the thing is, if battery power is so good in 10 or 15 years from now, I you know, it might be more economically you know it might be the idea to change but i'm assuming and it might be an incentive then yeah but then there's always people there's always people when we go to van Tastival, there's you know there's some beautiful vans coming in you know so the t6 is a really good looking handsome van i think mm. right as vans go it's a good looking van it's a beautiful design i think that's why when i look at the t6.1 and the t7 the first thing you're doing is saying yeah it has all these extras but what does it look like because you'll want the, the van in 10 or 15 or 20 years will look it nice. Needs to wear well. Yeah, and so then there's always going to be people who, who will want a T6. And as people scrap them and get rid of them and write them off, they, they in themselves will probably become more valuable. So that kind of answers your long-term thing about kind of hanging on to mm. it. So, so look, I think, I don't know, it's a bit of a rambling rant. I think, that, again, I stress that this video is more about our... View. Uninformed view on things. And it was a good question Charles asked. And I think... Really, it's about kind of starting a dialogue and people putting comments in the commenting and then saying, not, not, not kind of maybe questioning us, but pointing out what they think for other people to read and have an understanding. And it would be, it would be interesting because what I've noticed is through the channel is that most of the views that we get for videos tend to be van related, not travel videos. They tend to be more interested so i think the people here because the last video i put up about the van being four years old got a good few views so i think people love their vans and they're very concerned about them and mm. stuff like that so i think you know this hopefully will kind of generate a little bit of interest and maybe people will put their comments into it and stuff which i think would be good and helpful i'll be curious myself you know, I'll be very curious to see but again it's just guesswork because we don't know but i'd say if i was a gambling man Yes, I think we are coming to a point where we will change over to battery power. And I think, you know, 10, like when you think about it, how, te 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 how technology develops every six months, you know, the, the, you know, it just takes a huge leap and a year, like five years in tech is like a thousand years. Yeah, but I really do believe that the governments can't do anything before they actually upgrade things and give incentives for people to do it because it's grand the one or two people that will buy because they like the new this and the new that but well but they do already the they masses give, they do already they give you incentives to buy electric Not enough, but, though. but if you want a particular so you want a vw california and there isn't an electric one then you're going to go out and buy a diesel one knowing that in five years from now mm. it'll become obsolete you know so th see this is this is the whole see, question I don't, I don't think they're going to become obsolete you're still going to have to be 
diesel options in things like trucks. Right. They're never going to be able to make an electric truck. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So there but still I, has to be diesel engines I don't out know, there. I don't know how, how old Charles is. Charles could be twenty five years old. So twenty years from him, he's only going to be forty something. Twenty years from me, at my age, is a different proposition. Like I'll be nearly seventy at that stage. So you know, I I'll, I'll have a different mindset. Mm. You know, I won't be young and beautiful and sprightly like I am now. Mm -hmm. I'd be, um, well, I'm not saying that 70 year olds aren't young and beautiful and sprightly. I walked myself into that one, didn't I? Um, okay, so any other thoughts or comments? No. Just don't buy it with the thought of selling it. Mm, it's probably good you're advice. Missing, yeah. You're missing what it's about then. I get that, yeah. It's, if you're not going to be allowed to travel anywhere in it, what's the point? Yeah. But don't buy it with the thought of selling it. Well, well, I'll tell you something now. I'm, I'm going to ramble a little bit now. But I think I, I, what, what was very interesting was, because I'm on the VW forum, I, I watch it, or I, I, get the, I get the email once a week with the most popular topics, and someone put up the comment, and it, and it rung true with me as well. So they bought the van, because I fell into this trap as well. They bought the van, and then they went to book their first holiday. And then they're going... It's very expensive. By the time you factor in the boat, yeah, and by the diesel. time you factor in diesel, and by the time you factor in a camp, tolls, a tolls, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, and I think I think the thing is, you you buy the van thinking it's going to save you a fortune, but actually, when you do go onto the continent, uh, you kind of go, holy, you know, for us just to get off the island, like the the the, the return trip to Scotland for us is five hundred euro, and um, you know, for a two hour boat ride across, so it's five hundred euro. But I, my heart went down to the person because I thought that is a very true point. That you do, it is, they are expensive holidays, especially when you're paying for the van and doing them. Yeah. I think once you own the van, the cost of going away, especially now that what we're saying is when we go to Scotland, we're not booking into anywhere. We may stay in places, but we haven't planned. Mm. So what we're, all we're going to have to do is pay for the boat, pay for diesel, pay for what we eat and drink. But it's far more, it's going to be a cheaper option. But to get the boat to the continent, what, a thousand euro? You know, so it's a thousand euro away, thousand euro, and then driving around. And then if you, if you, yeah. And then obviously in the future, if the price of diesel goes up because they try and tax us off the road, like, you know. Yeah. So it is expensive. So, you know, there are, there are things, but I think, I think once you get through to five years or if people buy a secondhand van and are paying for them over three years or something mm. like that, I think once you get through, because I know next year we will have that extra money in our pocket and it'll take the pressure off us paying for the van and trying to use it at the same time. Because it is, you know, how much the trip round France, or how much did the trip last year cost us? It was two grand for the campsite, was it, or something like that? Or and it was a thousand euro for the campsite. A thousand euro, but then it's like a thousand euro for the boat. Yeah. And, and then, then I think I borne through three, four, five hundred euros worth of diesel. And then it was nearly five hundred euro on towels as well, I think. Yeah. All around. So having a California is expensive if you do those kind of trips. When we go for wild camping down to, to you know, down to a beach in Kerry and stay there overnight cheapest chips it's half a tank of fuel you know so mm. when we do own the van they'll be the cheapest holidays and probably some of the best holidays you'll ever have yeah because you're not worrying about the headache yeah. so um, that the, and that's the beauty of the van that i think you know some of the we've had some great nights away and i think now that we have this mindset about everything you know so that's why i'm looking forward to scotland that's going to be our first real test mm. of you know wild camping and whatever so we'll end up parking in you know a lay-by or we're going to park in a forest or we're going to park in the middle of nowhere is it going to be an ikea car park or a mcdonald's car park is it going to be in someone's car park you know what i mean someone's garden yeah anyone out there wants to hook us up anyone who's scotland <laughs> and in, in scotland and scottish we know donal hi donal beautiful van so uh best to look at it donal got a new van I know. so um he's on instagram so if we um yeah, maybe if people can recommend places to Scotland. Sorry, totally gone off in a transition have. here, haven't I? Anyway, so it's about getting value for money out of these videos. That's. Have you anything else to say? Just buy the van, Charles. Just buy the van. Just buy the van, Charles. Just buy the van, yeah. And then you can blame Vanessa. No gin and tonics today. We're being healthy. Black coffee's all around. Okay. Say goodbye. Bye. I click this now. I'm going to say goodbye, right? <laughs> Three. Two, one. <laughs> Thanks, Baba. Just buy the van, Charles. Don't mind him. Just buy the van.